Okay, we're ready now. This, um, I'm going to tell you something about the native plant garden signs. It's not an uh, art form as much as it is, is a somewhat artistic answer to a problem we have, and that is people don't know our plants because they're not roses and irises in traditional landscape plants. And uh, we always work under the theory that if you know these things, just like if you recognize pictures of your children, you just think they're the cutest things. <clears throat> so years ago, about 2015, uh, we had a tour at Liz's house and uh, Liz Stanley's house and she Huh. Uh, and she uh, didn't have any garden signs and it occurred to me that not explaining, not being available to explain to everybody that walks by your garden is it's, it's too bad that there isn't something to explain what is this they are seeing. So we had a little committee and this is um, five, six years ago and we decided to uh, develop some commercial quality garden signs. This project is a pro project of the development committee. Um, uh, Aaron Sutherland and Jerry, Jeremy Mayberg, next year's committee. Uh, we are looking for people to help us with all our projects, but this would be one. So anybody who likes thinking about garden signs, this is your chance. How come it won't forward? Okay. There it is. Um, okay, now, why do we do these? You can see the, an array of some of them that we have. We started with 25. We're now up to 125 species. We're gonna add 25 more. And um, we do this because our mission, in fact, our 501c3, we are chartered under education as a nonprofit with education as our mission. But also, it's a way to recognize and identify what's going on in your yard, especially if you put one out by your, your, um, your crocuses, like we saw in Jan's yard, and then they are ephemeral and they disappear and you wonder where they are in the spring, they're gonna come right up next to your yard sign. Um, and that's what I mean when I say it helps you locate things. But it's really all about education of other people, especially people that can benefit from knowing this is a purposeful uh, project that you've got going on in your yard. <clears throat> um, so um, how did we, uh, get this project? Well, it was a bunch of volunteers. It remains volunteers. All of Wild Ones is volunteer um, managed and driven and uh, developed. Um, then we asked for who's got some great pictures. John Arthur uh, gave us uh, high-res photographs. Katie Chaka, minnesotawildflowers.info. Uh, those are members and um, we get most of our pictures now from Katie because she has 2,000 species with pictures. And, um, you know, there's nothing she doesn't have. And she gives them to us for free. Um, the layout of the, car, the uh, sign, which is four by two and a half inches, was uh, done by that famous uh, graphic designer, uh, Doug Benson, also our member of Benson Design. That's all it took. We just figured out how, what we wanted. We wanted a commercial sign. We wanted to, to be able to stay outside so that in the spring, when the things come up, it's already there waiting for them. Um, so uh, we went to a commercial sign uh, manufacturer and they specified 3M Comitex. Uh, the zinc stakes will not rust. Uh, the UV ink is not bothered by the sun. And the 3M VHB tape that assembles the stake to the photograph, actually VHB means very high bond. It's the stuff they use to hold 
uh, plate glass windows in high rises. So it's serious. It can take all the temperatures you can throw at it. So no problem. We can, these come to us with the sign material and the stakes and the tape all separate. And some volunteer, usually me or some of my relatives, have to assemble it. So we want to be able to, that this isn't like so much a money maker as it definitely starts out to be an educational project. It needs to be affordable. Um, we checked it out. There were none anywhere on the internet. You could get, oh, things for your uh, irises and for all kinds of different hybridized things at like eight, ten dollars a piece, but nothing for natives. So these we're able to sell for three dollars and still give two free away if you buy 25 and still make some almost a dollar a piece. And so we're not in business. We don't have a retail store. These have um, just sold at our conference and by word of going on our website and word of mouth. WildOnesTwinCities.org. Remember, it's not .com because those people work nights. It's WildOnesTwinCities.org. That's the kind of wild ones we are. And um, on there, there's um, a tab for the plant signs. And you can see them all, a picture of all of them, a, a printable uh, form for all of them. And you can um, either answer info at, at wildwinds.org or call our phone number and leave a message. And guess what? Somebody will get right back to you. So I'm going to just jump in here and say I'm the one who answers those messages, the phone, the phone calls. And I, most of the calls I get are about the plant signs. Yeah, so. we just got one again this week. I'm, I'm preparing a woman from uh, Missouri just got a hold of us. Thank you, Joe Ellen, for forwarding the phone call. She was so excited because um, some of their species don't match ours, but the ones that do, she was, she's buying a birthday, a Christmas gift for her friend. And when we get our next 25, she's going to look for a birthday gift for him. And she's willing to pay the shipping fee because zinc isn't lightweight. So it usually costs a few bucks to mail these things because she's so excited and she searched all over the net. And um, so she, she found us by her local Wild Ones chapter. It, it anyway, was just really exciting, I have to say. It's really yeah. exciting to get those um, phone calls and to respond to them and, and say, yes, we can send you the signs. It is. And we have sent them to Missouri, um, Iowa, Illinois. All, and of course, I just make it a habit to deliver them free in the metropolitan area um, because I usually want to speak to them about how to assemble them uh, to put the stakes properly. And, you know, I like to see their gardens and, you know. It, so for me, I do it for free. Um, unless it's out of town, and then uh, I get a, their approval for the shipping fees. Well, this is, I apologize, I, do, I take these pictures with my camera, which is nothing like Vicki's fancy camera. So it's just my uh, phone camera. But this is a picture of um, the uh, field pussy toes, and I want to show you some pictures of these signs in the wild. There it is, out there in the wild uh, garden outside of my front door. The first year I lived in this house, I quick started planting some ground covers and all kinds of um, natives. And so you can see that's a first year field pussy toe. The next year, same sign, same place, hasn't moved. Look at those pussy toes becoming ground cover. And now I got the idea then last, last summer to put right next to those pussy toes 
the pearly everlasting. Now I have two habitats for the American lady butterfly to choose from. Both, both host plants for that butterfly. And, uh, and in that same, right going along the rocks there, um, you know you can't read these because again, our photographer at my house isn't, uh, isn't a pro. But I wanted to capture the Susian picture of the rattlesnake master. But along the uh, edge, that's also another ground co cover taking place, the golden ragwort. Um, and those, I just leave those out, they're covered with snow right now. And you, this is a little grainy, but look at the beautiful color. And so it loses something in the wild uh, by viewing it from 15 feet back. But right, the first year, these plants were only a year old, um, the swamp milkweed and the prairie onion got their signs. And what? No sign? That's right next to, to those plants. Such a pretty, such a pretty face without a sign. Oh, well, then this is what we typically have. That is a calico aster in its fall bloom. And they're so pretty. And it bloomed right through the first snow. So guess what's going to be on the list for our next 25 signs? Calico aster. So I'm, I'm asking all of you people, all 25 of you, that gives you each one species to recommend. Just kidding. Recommend all you want. Bill Blood, Jim Coleman, you've been promising me a list. Um, we know we're going to do 25 more species. Either email your recommendations to info at wildonestwincities.org or call uh, Joe Allen on the phone, leave a message. I say leave a message because no one answers that phone. She always answers the message. It's, it's uh, that kind of, it's a message center. We're going to add 25 species and uh, yours can be on that list. So we'll be up to 150 out of 2,000. This, this project has going to have some teeth. So that is the end of the commercial, or as we say in a click and clack, the shameless, uh, sh the, the shameless commercial division. Um, if, if you have any questions, just feel free to put them in the chat. The question I've got currently up is Marilyn, when, um, when they change the botanical name of a plant like asters, what do you do? <laughs> Yes, we had that happen to us. And um, you throw all those away and you make new ones. Um, and we just, uh, we, 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 I, I beg you all to infiltrate the Native Plant Society and stop that phenomenon because it's hard on us. Well, we've only had one, you know, in, in five years. So it is what it is.